A young millionaire saves a poor elderly woman from a devastating fire, but upon entering the house, he comes across a photograph that leaves him in shock. As the pieces of his life begin to fit together, he finds himself forced to confront uncomfortable truths about love, loss and forgiveness. This unexpected journey not only reveals the secrets of his past, but also leads him to rediscover his roots and, above all, himself. Hello, my friends. I am Linda, and this is the Linda Stories channel. I hope you enjoy this story. The sky exploded in shades of orange and pink as Leo drove through the narrow streets of an old neighbourhood. He was there for a reason, though he avoided thinking about what it meant. The ageing houses and nostalgic air contrasted with the shine of the luxury car that transported him. To anyone who saw him, he was just another successful businessman. But inside, something gnawed at him. A constant restlessness he could never explain. Since childhood, Leo carried a void that neither money nor achievements could fill. Recurring dreams of a woman with dark hair and a gentle smile haunted him. In each of these dreams, she called to him. But the moment he tried to reach her, she vanished like a shadow in the wind. The search for answers had brought him to these streets. His adoptive parents said it was there that he had been left. But the only thing he really knew was that, at one year old, someone abandoned him at their doorstep. And no one, not even he, had answers. The car slid down the street until it stopped in front of an old house. Leo turned off the engine, taking a deep breath. He was just steps away from a past he never knew, but that had pursued him his entire life. Suddenly, a scream cut through the evening silence. He looked around, on alert. A column of smoke rose from a house a few metres away. Without hesitating, Leo jumped out of the car and ran towards the flames. As he got closer, the sound of muffled screams echoed from inside. Is anyone there? He shouted, unable to see through the dense smoke. Help, I'm trapped! A woman's weak voice came from upstairs. Without thinking, Leo pulled his jacket over his face and rushed into the burning house. The heat and smoke were suffocating, but he climbed the stairs determinedly. There, he found an elderly lady lying on the floor, coughing desperately. I'll get you out of here! He picked her up in his arms and quickly descended the stairs. But as he passed through the hallway, something on the wall caught his attention. A framed portrait, covered in soot. Leo's heart stopped. It was her face. The woman who visited him in his dreams. Still in shock, he managed to get the lady out of the house, handing her over to approaching neighbours. The firefighters were arriving, but the image of the woman in the portrait hammered in his mind. Thank you, young man, said the elderly lady, still gasping. You saved me. I am glad you were well, Leo replied, struggling to remain calm. But before he could control his curiosity, the words slipped out. I saw a portrait inside your house of a woman with dark hair. The lady's expression changed, her eyes widened. Ah, you saw Julia, my best friend, but that was many years ago. She swallowed hard, seeming to get lost in memories. Leo's heart raced. He finally had a name for the face that had haunted him all his life. Can I visit you in the coming days? Leo asked. I would like to talk more if it's not inconvenient. With a warm smile, she nodded. You will always be welcome, young man. In the days that followed, Leo couldn't get Julia out of his head. Something was about to be revealed, he felt it. When he finally returned to Florence's house, he was greeted with a smile. As they talked, the elderly woman told him about Julia, about the friendship they had, and finally about her friend's early pregnancy, forced to give her baby up for adoption. Leo felt the ground disappear beneath his feet. And... What happened to the baby? He barely managed to ask, his voice trembling. Florence looked at him with sudden understanding. You have a birthmark, don't you? On the back of your neck? A half moon? Stunned, he nodded. Yes. How do you know? Florence's expression changed to something between surprise and emotion. Julia talked about it. You... Leo. You are probably her child. You look a lot like her. 
The moment he mentioned the portrait the other day, when Leo saved her, she noticed the birthmark on the back of his neck, just as Julia had described. At that moment, she preferred not to touch on the subject. She didn't know if Leo was aware of his origins or if it was a wound he had not yet decided to open. But, seeing him mention the portrait and showing interest in returning, Florence decided to give him space so they could talk about what had long been buried. Leo's world crumbled and rebuilt itself in a second. The void, the dreams, the mystery. Everything finally made sense. Tears rolled down his face as the truth overwhelmed him. Leo felt the ground disappear from under him. So, she is my mother. The words came out with difficulty, as if they were stuck in his throat. Florence nodded slowly. Julia always talked about you. But there were complicated circumstances. She didn't want to abandon you. Then why did she do it? His voice came out choked, a mix of anger and pain. Florence took his hands, squeezing them gently. Julia was young Leo, and she was sick. Her parents didn't believe she could take care of you on her own. They were poor, and they feared you would suffer. They tried to convince her to terminate the pregnancy, but Julia refused. She fought for you. Leo clenched his fists, trying to control the anger that was beginning to rise. And after that, did they force her to leave me? Florence shook her head, her eyes sad. After you were born, things got worse. Julia was getting weaker and weaker, and your parents believed that leaving you with another family would be the best thing for you. She didn't want to, Leo, but she felt she had no choice. She abandoned me like that, and never tried to find me. His voice cracked at the end, tears threatening to fall. She did try, Florence replied softly. Years later, when her health deteriorated, she came back here. She wanted to see you, to hold you, but you had already moved away, and she couldn't find you. Even when she was sick, she never stopped looking for you, she never forgot you. Leo ran his hands over his face, the tears finally falling. He had always thought he had been abandoned because he wasn't wanted. Now, everything made sense. Julia had fought for him, even when the circumstances defeated her. Before she died, Florence continued, her voice gentle and careful. Julia asked me to find you. She wanted me to tell you that she was sorry for not being there, that she loved you, Leo, that she loved you every single day, even from afar. The anger inside him began to give way to something deeper, an ancient pain that was finally finding some relief. Leo's chest filled with the truth. Although painful, the story was not the cold abandonment he had imagined all his life. It was something different, more complex and more human. Florence watched him in silence for a moment, waiting for him to process everything. When he finally spoke, it was in a low voice, laden with emotion. She never wanted to leave you, Leo. It was the hardest choice of her life, and all she wanted in the end was for you to know that. In the days and weeks that followed, Leo spent hours by Florence's side, listening to stories about his mother. She told him about Julia's youth, her strength and struggle, and how, even in the face of all difficulties, she carried immense love for him. With each story, he felt his anger transform into something different, a painful but necessary understanding. The emptiness he had carried for so long began to be filled in an unexpected way. It was no longer the lack of answers that tormented him, but the realisation that he was wanted, that his mother had fought for him in the best way she could. With each visit, it was as if Leo was removing another layer of an old wound, a pain he didn't even know he carried so deeply. With each answer, new questions arose. The stories about his mother, Julia, enveloped him but also suffocated him. Knowing that he was loved and at the same time abandoned was unbearable. On the third time, he returned to Florence's house. After hearing more about his mother's last years, he couldn't take it anymore. He stood up suddenly, his chest tight, feeling short of breath. He needed to leave. He needed to escape those words echoing in his mind. She loved you. She tried to find you. 
She died without seeing you again. I need to go, he murmured, his voice laden with tension. Before Florence could say anything, Leo left, his feet moving on impulse. The pain and abandonment were swallowing him, as if the ground beneath his feet was crumbling. He ran through the streets, his footsteps echoing in the silence. His chest burned, not from running, but from anger. An anger he didn't even know where it came from. It was the weight of having been left, but also of being wanted. Each step, each heartbeat, was a cry he couldn't release. When he stopped in a dark alley, his legs trembling, his body sweaty, Leo punched the nearby wall, feeling the pain shoot up his arm. Why? he shouted, his voice broken. Why didn't she try harder? Was I not enough? The echo of his words faded, leaving him alone with his pain. His hands trembled, and he felt more fragile than ever. Sitting on the ground, leaning against the cold wall, Leo finally broke down. The tears flowed, carrying away the anger and despair that suffocated him. And there, exhausted, he stayed until the crying ceased and only emptiness remained. In the following days he saw Florence again, but something had changed. His reactions were still intense, but gradually he began to feel that the answers brought more than just pain. With each story he allowed himself to see his mother's love, even if belatedly. It was a difficult acceptance, but necessary. Then on a quiet night, Leo dreamt of Julia again. But this time, the dream was different. He was no longer running after her as she disappeared. They were in an open field, under a serene blue sky. Julia waited for him, smiling, her hair loose in the wind. When he ran to her this time, she didn't vanish. In the dream, he embraced her. He felt the comforting warmth of that hug, as if all the pain dissipated. Julia held him tightly, saying without words all that hadn't been said. The embrace was enough. When they pulled away, she looked him in the eyes and smiled. I have always loved you, Leo. Never doubt that. Leo woke up with tears in his eyes, but for the first time, he didn't feel empty. His chest felt light, as if the last piece of a puzzle had finally fallen into place. He knew that his search had come to an end. There were no more questions, no more wounds that needed healing. The dream had brought the relief he had been seeking. In the days that followed, he continued visiting Florence, but now with a different calmness. The revelations about his mother no longer made him crumble. Instead, they brought understanding. The love his mother felt for him seemed to fill him. The pain was still there, but it had lost its weight. Now, it was just part of his story. On one of the last visits as the sun set over the city, Florence shared one final memory that deeply touched Leo's heart, as if it closed, once and for all, the cycle that had tormented him so much. Look, Florence said, pointing to the framed picture of Julia hanging on the wall. She has been here by my side for so long. Her story touched me in a way I never imagined. After Julia's departure, and even before I met you, something inside me changed. She showed me that time is short and life is unique, and that led me to look at the world with different eyes. Leo listened in silence, curious to understand the depth of her words. I am a teacher, as you know, but the loss of Julia awakened in me an urgent need to do more. Thinking about other children who have no one to protect them made me realise that my role goes far beyond teaching in the classroom. I started getting involved with shelters and projects aimed at children and youth without support. Through culture and education, I discovered that I could help them dream and believe that the future still had something to offer. This transformed me, Leo, and at the same time made me feel like I was honouring Julia's memory. Florence, with her eyes shining, looked at Leo, and he perceived the weight and depth of her words. He knew, more than anyone, what it was like to be a child without biological ties, yet still loved and cared for by his adoptive parents. He was lucky and had opportunities that many did not have. And listening to Florence, he felt that, like her, he also needed to do more. 
In the following days, something inside him began to change. He reflected on his life and his achievements, but above all, on how fate, with its twists and turns, had led him to that moment. He had something to offer the world and knew it was time to start giving back. With Florence's support, Leo got involved in the same charity and culture projects aimed at children in shelters. At first, he felt insecure, doubting if he could really make a difference. But over time, he realised that every minute dedicated to those children was a way of rewriting his own story. He, who had been adopted and raised in a loving family, experienced firsthand how small actions could change lives. One day, during a community event for one of these projects, Leo decided to introduce Florence to his adoptive parents. That meeting symbolised the union of all the pieces of his life, past and present. His parents, always welcoming, received Florence with open arms and the bond that formed between them was instant. From that moment on, the three became close, sharing stories and special moments that reaffirmed how Julia, even in her absence, continued to be a constant and transformative presence in their lives. However, life still had something more in store for Leo. At one of the project's events, he met Aurora, a woman who seemed to be made of light. She was kind, dedicated, and deeply involved in the work with the children. There was something about her manner that captivated Leo from the first moment. Her sincere smile and gentleness made him feel at peace, as if he were reconnecting with a part of himself. Aurora also had her own story of love and dedication. She had grown up in a foster family and, like Leo, knew what it was to be loved by people who chose to care for her. She dedicated her time and heart to ensuring that other children had the same chance she did. Over time, Leo and Aurora grew closer, their lives intertwining in a natural and profound way. It didn't take long for both to realise they were destined to meet. It was as if destiny which had often been cruel and uncertain for them both, was finally gifting them with something beautiful and lasting. They were soulmates, connected not just by love, but also by a common desire to do good and impact the lives of people around them. Florence, who watched from a distance the growing connection between the two, smiled with satisfaction, seeing how life, despite its pains and challenges, was still capable of surprising. She knew, deep in her heart, that Julia somehow was also smiling. With Aurora by his side, Leo found more than true love. He found a shared purpose, a life full of meaning. Together, they continued to dedicate themselves to social projects, impacting the lives of countless children and young people and creating the family they had always dreamed of, surrounded by love, understanding and gratitude. And in the end, Leo understood that despite all the twists and turns life had given him, he was exactly where he was meant to be at peace with himself and with those he loved. If you enjoyed, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment with a number from 1 to 5 to let us know how much you liked the story. Also, watch the video that is currently on your screen. See you soon.